Hello everyone and welcome to Harz World where we are back in Ravensburg, Central Germany. That's right. It is the third day of spring. We have crossed over into mid-spring and um, things are hopping. Things are absolutely hopping. There's plenty to get done. A lot to get done. First thing I want to mention is I am bumping time up to 15 times speed. It seems like six days is probably going to feel like a very long amount of time, so I felt like some uh, additional speed was going to help us out. That means we might get through a couple of days per episode. We'll see how it all plays out, get a feel for the time, adjust as necessary, and hopefully everything will work out for the best. Fingers crossed. Now, I still have a major problem with cattle. They are, <laughs> as we saw the last time, um, really doing a number on this manure, manure pile over here. So I called, I called Herr Huber. Like I said, he is a savvy businessman, a very savvy businessman. He knows a lot of people. And I said, hey, I've got this problem and I need some help. So he started calling around and, well, you might have heard of the reputation for German engineering. If you haven't, I have, trust me, German engineers are often considered some of the best in the world. And he had them send over this conveyor belt system. And we're going to get that all set up right about now. I'm going to try anyway. Now, they assured him that this conveyor system isn't any normal conveyor system. Now, and watch me, watch me jack this up because I, what I want to do, I want to, yep, that's what I want to do. More like that. Yep. Because I don't want it, I don't want it shooting out into the field. I want to kind of have a 90 degree angle on this, and that's going to be a bit of a challenge because I can't see how my front front wheels are turned. Come on. drop that off for just a second because I need to get into this one and fold it up like so that's better that's better now we'll hook back up everything should be running appropriately we're going to raise this bad boy up as high as we can to make sure that our trailer will get under it that's not bad it's not exactly what I would want but it's not bad turn that on it's going to start moving the, the manure out and let's see if we can't just slide in there a little bit deeper oh come on yeah, one way or another okay so we have got some manure moving through this thing now, the other thing that I did, here Huber had that, uh, that tipper trailer, that rice trailer. Well, I ran that over to the shop and returned it. I said, yo, this is not going to do me any favors. And I bought this big bad boy. It holds 70,000 liters. And look at that conveyor bell go. German engineering at its finest. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. So my first job of the day <laughs> is hauling this over to the biogas plant. Um, nice thing is, I mean, I hauled two trailer loads the other day and made about 20,000 euros off of that. So it is going to be bringing in some money. Now, I know some of you are thinking, hey, why don't you just use it on your fields? Well, you see the rate that these, these cattle are producing? Um, I could easily use it on my fields and still not get through it all. 
And these guys are going to be producing all winter long. So I'm, I figure I'm better off burning the cash from the biogas plant than I am trying to buy equipment to spread it. And it's very time consuming to spread manure too because it's not like fertilizer where you just spread a little bit. You know, you go through, con through manure at a fairly quick rate when you try to use it as fertilizer on a field. Now we've got plenty, clearly we have plenty of it, that's not the issue. The issue is finding a spreader that will hold enough manure that you're not spreading for two minutes, refilling for ten minutes, spreading for two minutes. You know, it, it becomes a, a huge, huge time sink. So anyway, with all that said, we're going to sell manure. We're not going to try to use it, and I am going to get this delivered. And I'll see you back at the farm. Okay, that didn't take so long. That did not take so long at all. You know, thinking about Ravensburg, Central Germany, and all that got me thinking about German engineering. Now, I don't know how many of you have heard, but I have heard that German ear engineering is some of the best in the... Holy cow, look at that. We're ready to go again. And we have moved a lot out of there. Good. I'll run that down later. German engineering is some of the best in the world. So I started looking into that just a little bit, and I found out two interesting facts. The first, Germany invented the microphone, which, without which... <laughs> you would not be hearing me speak right now. So kudos to Germany for that. Or maybe not, depending on your perspective. Um, and the other one is, you console gamers out there, if you're a console player, Germany invented the first console game. And here, this is a testament to my age. I remember it. <laughs> 1972. The very first console was used to play a little game called Pong. And all it was, you had a paddle on one side and a paddle on the other and a ball that would bounce back and forth and uh, you had to try to hit it. Almost like a little tennis ball kind of thing. But that was the introduction to consoles by Germany. We're going to learn some more German fun facts throughout this series. But those two were pretty interesting. I found those pretty darn intriguing to get us started. So console players, give a shout out to the Germans. They're the reason you get to play farm sim right now. All right, what do we got to get done? We still need, field 23 needs to be plowed and planted before the end of spring. And I was looking at my fields and this new grass field, the pasture grass I put in, it's showing weeds and it still needs more fertilizer. So I'm going to get fertilizer on this, and then 24 is starting to show weeds, and it too needs a coat of fertilizer. So we're going to get fertilizer on that. Also, then I'm going to herbicide every bit of this. I'm going to try to do some preventative herbicidation, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. I'm going to see if I can just spread spray this whole field and keep any more weeds from popping up. Now when I plowed this out, I needed a coat of lime on here, so I got that taken care of. You can almost see our pasture grass popping up. It's got these lovely little yellow flowers in there, so that's that's the pasture grass here. And this thing is <laughs> massive. Have we used this before? I'm not entirely sure. With this, pasture grass fertilization should not take very long at all, however. I need to zoom out just to be able to see what I can do with this boom. Yeah, see, if I'm not careful, I'm just going to shear that thing right off, and that would be totally uncool. I don't think the, the very pragmatic Herr Huber would be very impressed by me shearing off the boom on the uh, fertilizer sprayer on the third day of work. Although I have to say, I'm very, very pleased. I really missed that edge. Very, very, very pleased with the um, the testament to German engineering that he provided with those uh,
conveyors. That is really going to solve that, that little manure problem. Now a little bit more growth on this grass and I'll be able to start moving some of my cattle up here. Spreading them out just a little bit. Giving them some uh, room to wander and roam. So they're not quite so tied up in that pen. Man, I'm not used to driving a, a boom wagon this big. Boom wagon. I like the sound of that. What you driving today? I'm driving me a boom wagon. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> Look at that. Talk about short order. What's a boom wagon do? Well, it makes your crops grow. Now, I've been doing some thinking about that last field. And I think, I'm actually sure, I need to get a crop in there that's going to produce some straw because the way these guys are producing um, they are going to need plenty of straw and so I definitely want to make sure that I am producing plenty of straw to keep these guys satisfied over the winter. Now I could do without straw it would convert them to slurry and at some point I am going to run a little test just to find out how much it damages their health. Maybe, maybe when I move cattle up here, instead of giving them straw, I will see how this area up here compares to the other cattle pasture down there, health-wise, if I don't give them straw. Because when you're playing in seasons, it is very distinctly possible to um, damage your animal health by not, or yes, by not giving them straw. However, I was having a discussion the other day with someone, and they said, I'm not sure that applies when you're playing Maze Plus. So we're going to find out. And since I've got two cattle pastures, it should be reasonably easy to do that test. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, come on, Harv. I know that boom is out there a long way, but it's not quite that dramatic, is it? Yeah, maybe. I think that should do. Get some course play action going here. Not course play. There we go, that's better. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, we are off and running. It's noon already. That might be about right. That might be just about right. 15 times speed. We're going to find out though. We're also going to find out about these cattle. And running speed a little bit quicker will allow me to move my cattle over there just a little bit quicker also. It's also going to mean that the uh, manure piles up quicker as well. But this little uh, fertilizer job shouldn't take long. About three passes up and down this field and we're going to be golden. But then I need to swap out for herbicide. Now, I actually think that barley might be a good choice. I think barley might be a good choice to put in field 23. Um, it creates straw. 
which is going to be important to me, but also it is one of the primary crops in Germany. Germany produces a lot of barley, and I'll bet you can guess why. Because Germany produces a lot of beer. A lot of beer. They're not the leading producer of beer, but they produce a lot of it. Everybody has probably heard of Oktoberfest. Surely you've heard of Oktoberfest. You are a human being after all. And I was a little bit curious about that also. And so, and it actually comes up on the list of German inventions under festivals. Oktoberfest got its, got its start when one of the crown princes was getting married. And he decided to have a big party for everybody. He said, everybody come on down. Let's party. Let's get down. You hang outside the castle walls out on the, on the village green. And uh, we are going to have a good time to celebrate my marriage to, it was Teresa. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but her name was Teresa. In fact... The original green where this party was held is called it's called Teresa Wiesen or Teresa Visa and that means Teresa's Meadow which is interesting so Teresa Visa or Teresa Visa something like that Pardon my pronunciation, oh, glorious German people. I'm, I'm doing my best, I promise you. <laughs> anyway, oh, the heck with it. I'm just going to run up here and make sure I spread this edge. We'll get some extra spray, but life will go on. It'll cost us a little extra, but hey, it is what it is. Oh, and that was Crown Prince Ludwig, by the way. And for those of you who don't know, the letter W in English is pronounced V in German. So Ludwig is Ludwig. So, yeah, the grounds where they held the party is called Teresa Visa. And it's still named that to this day. I'm sure they probably still have the festival there to this day. And you can see our corn is coming up quite nicely here. Quite nicely. It's not going to do so nice if we don't get the weeds out of here, though. And that's going to be our next little, little chore. In fact, I'm not, I don't even have to change my... my uh, or my um, That one mod that I'm using... <laughs> my GPS, I can run right back over there and run that field a second time and then go up and do the cattle pasture also. Unload that fertilizer. Load up this herbicide. And I guess um, you know, if you are local to the area, you simply call it Wiesen now. Wiesen. They don't say the whole word, it's just Wiesen. But Oktoberfest. That's where it comes from. And, uh, let's see, that's, uh, yeah, that was in 1810. So the first celebration of Oktoberfest was in 1810. And it's kind of been appropriated by cultures all over the world at this point. Everybody wants to get in on the action and celebrate some Oktoberfest. I know there are plenty of Oktoberfest celebrations here in the United States. I mean, it's not like a peop people need an excuse to drink beer, but if they have one, they're definitely going to take advantage of it. Definitely. 
All right, let me slap some herbicide on this field, and we'll check back in. Okay, that little weed problem is taken care of. Everything has got herbicide on, including the cattle pasture, the pasture grass that we're test driving up there. So that is resolved. Let's see. Oh, we have got silage. Very nice. Grass silage. We can make multiple types of silage when it comes to uh, maize plus. This was just mown grass, so I'm going to have to collect that up and get it in the silo at some point. But right now, I've got bigger fish to fry, and that fish is in the form of field 23. We're going to bust out the fent for this. Oh, yes. <laughs> if I can drive it, that's the question. Now, I did bring the plow in and did some maintenance on it. Got it all cleaned up and ready to go for its final use of the season. Well, final use on this farm anyway. I might be picking up some work from some of the locals, but for the moment, it's just our little old dinky farm here. <laughs> little dinky, itty bitty, tiny farm. Let's see if we can we can try this again. That's not right either. Something's just not gonna work right. Not gonna work right at all. I don't know why it's picking up an odd width. I'll sort that out later. Neither here nor there. What I do know is we are running 270 on our cardinal. And that's all I really need to know. Okay. That's perfect now. This field is going to take a while. It's going to probably finish off the rest of this day. And carry us right on over into tomorrow morning. So what I'm going to end up doing here, I can tell you right now, is plowing, plowing, and more plowing. I will run another load of manure over to the biogas plant, just to stay ahead on it. That'll give us 140,000 liters of manure over there sold off. And the nice thing is, I forgot to mention, the reason I traded in the trailer was, yeah, it was a tipper. That is not a tipper. It, uh... It has a floor on it that pushes everything right out the back. It doesn't tip, so we don't get that funkiness at the biogas plant like we've had in the past. Don't need any more of that funky action. No, no, and no. So I am absolutely, positively, without a doubt certain, you know exactly what's happening on this field, and so we will cash back up Probably on the fourth day of spring. That's what I'm betting anyway. That, my friends, is a big field. Let me tell you. I ran this plow until 10 o'clock last night. And it is afternoon already here. And I just now finished up. Just now. <laughs> I did take a break to give our cattle some straw that they need fed and that's going to be my next chore here in fact I'm just going to pull off over here out of the way and I did run that other load of manure up I still need to get a load a couple of loads actually run up to the uh, biogas plant today oh and where are we going to find there's total mix ration 
don't know how much we're going to need, but we're going to need plenty. And I'm starting to run. I, I think I'm going to be running low if I'm not careful here. Very low. We're going to find out, though. I'm going to load it all and then dump it back in if I don't need it all. But that, uh, that two loads of manure that I ran, ran to the biogas plant that did bring in 25,000 euros. So that's going to help. If I have to start buying cattle feed, at least to uh, tide us over, maybe, maybe the manure will start paying for the cattle to eat. <laughs> maybe these cattle will provide for themselves. Now, there is good news on the cattle front, however, I'll tell you. Good news indeed, because I would say at this point a good thing third of our cattle are pregnant so the um, artificial insemination see it took half of that I've got about enough TMR for two more days so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to come up with a solution there. I'm gonna see what I can get cranked out between now and then which means a lot of manure hauling I can tell you right now And you can see our cattle health is actually improving. It's up to 88%. So even though that cleanliness is sitting at zero, it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. So I think we're okay there. Now TMR is filling up the silage requirement um, on both sides, the standard silage and the clover silage. What we do need to provide them with is additional hay. So I've got some hay also. I don't know how much. Hopefully enough to keep them going for a while. Fingers crossed. See how much more nicely that trailer unloads. And where's our hay? There it is. Oh, I've got about 40,000 liters of hay, too. Very nice. Surely that's enough. If it didn't take all the TMR, it's not going to take all the hay, right? Right. Anyway, yes, our cattle are pregnant, which means, well, they're not going to produce milk until they give birth. Now, if a third of our cattle are pregnant, that's a very good sign for us because, um, well, that's those are free cows. And if we want to get to at least 1,100, yeah, see, that didn't take nearly as much hay. So I'm good to go for hay for a while. Thank goodness. And what 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 happened here? All right, I'll maybe I hit it with the trailer when I was coming through. I'll get it sorted. Hopefully it won't take too much longer, though, because I really wanted to just go ahead and refill this trailer. Now we are in the fourth day of spring at this point. We're not exactly hurting. We've got time. And I did change my mind about this field. Instead of barley, I am going to put rye in. Rye will give me the straw I need also. And rye is a very, very big German crop. Very big. And then, looking back again, I um, I shipped 140,000 liters of manure, and we're filled right back up again. I mean, look at that. Alright, let me get this thing sorted out. Okay, that'll do us. That will do us. No, I can't. Yep, I gotta, gotta ease my way over. Ease it. Ease it. There we go. Okay. Now we're just going to leave that there because I don't want to walk through that smelly mess.
In fact, one of the reasons I decided to switch to Rye is this. Germany is the largest producer of rye in the world. The absolute largest producer of rye. Nobody produces more rye than Germany, so it makes sense, right, that our first crop would be rye. That's flogging lootly. Got to get that beer production working out there. Although technically, and I didn't know this either, but most of the beer, not all of it, but most of the beer produced in Germany is produced in Bavaria. Bavaria specifically. And <clears throat> wine is produced in the Rhineland. Let's see here, rye. There we go. And now I know why Herr Huber bought this big old cedar. You know why? Because of this field right here. <laughs> this is a beast. And it's gonna it should provide us with plenty of straw. We can fill our our straw shed back up. It is starting to run awfully low. Now, rye's not going to do us much good when it comes to, like, cattle food. There we go. Or anything like that, but it should be a respectable cash crop. It's going to provide us with the income that we need to uh, either keep these cattle going or expand them. You know, because we not only have to uh, make this farm profitable, but Herr Huber insists, absolutely insists, that he have the largest, highest producing herd of cattle in the area. I don't even know what the guy's name is, but whoever he is, Herr Huber decided he's going to be number one. And this other guy is going to play second fiddle. We discussed all that. Now as far as agriculture in Germany goes, I've learned a few other interesting things, mostly about the crops that they grow. Uh, wheat is the primary product for Germany. They grow a lot of wheat, which makes sense. They make some amazing breads, right? Maybe that's what all the rye is for. Germans do like their dark breads. Another thing that Germans produce a lot of and I'm not sure I want to go down this path. I'll tell you right now. It's, it's an intimidating path. <laughs> Sugar beets. Now, if we were raising cattle, or I mean, if we were raising pigs, it would make sense for us to go down the sugar beet path. But we are not in the pork production industry. We are in the cattle production industry. And frankly... I'm glad of that. I don't want to do pigs. I've done the pigs. There's nothing wrong with pigs. But if Harry Huber were as adamant about pigs as he is about cattle, we would have our hands full. And don't get me wrong, I like bacon as much as the next guy. Maybe more than this, maybe more than the next guy because, well, frankly, my, my waistline would say I like it more than your average person. <laughs> anyway, um, what else are they producing in mass quantities? Wine is a big product of Germany, and that is grown most almost exclusively in the Rhineland. Not 
completely exclusively, but the Rhineland is where they're producing the majority of their wine. And yes, I know, I'm going to have to come back and touch up a lot of this stuff, but especially around the edges, I don't quite have a feel for this thing yet, but I knew I was going to need some headlands opened up on this field, and there was no getting around it. couple of heads on passes and then I should begin to go in my rows. Swing baby, swing. Germany is also the leading, no, it's not true, they are the sixth highest producer of canola. In fact, there was an interesting uh, little fact that came out, somebody in Australia broke the record for most canola harvested per acre. Like they set a new record. And some friends and I were talking about that. And what we discovered is, is that it's a new record for Australia, but it's not the world record. And the world record is held by, you guessed it, Germany. A farmer in Germany holds the record for harvesting the most canola per acre. That was kind of that was kind of interesting. Even though they're not the biggest producer in the world, apparently they know how to produce in quantity. And that leads me to another little interesting fact I found out about Germany. Is after World War II, Germany could produce about enough food to feed, I think it was 45 people per day. And at the current rate, right now with uh, advances in agriculture and engineering, Germany can feed about 150 people per day. So that's pretty impressive. When you think about it, but I think that's going to do it for our time in Ravensburg. I really appreciate you coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And until next time, Take care.